Hey family, I'm Pastor John Mark, and we are here at Wednesday Night Bible Study. We are going to be talking about the fourth chapter of Ephesians. But before we get started, we're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a good study Bible. You're going to need... Um, a notebook and a pen and a quiet place. For the study Bible, I use several different texts tonight and I also use a strong concordance so I can get a deeper understanding of the scriptures. You can also use Google. Google is a great resource to be able to understand the Bible deeper. So you have your Bible, your notebook, your pen, and a quiet place. If you're not able to watch this live, set some time aside every week to watch this and go over uh, these notes and the different teachings we have here today. So let's pray. God, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we're so grateful to be able to study your word, to hear from you, to learn a little bit more about you each day, Lord. We thank you, and we're praying for the health of our community, Lord, and we thank you for healing and touching the different members of our church that need a touch from you today, God. I thank you that as we get into your word, that you open the eyes of our understanding, enlighten us to your word, show us things to come, and help us to be guided by the Holy Spirit during this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I pray like this. Pastor Mike taught us how to pray like this so that we can have a deeper understanding so that the Holy Spirit can illuminate uh, the teachings of the scriptures. So let's dive right in. I'm going to read the scripture to you tonight. It comes from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. And he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God to, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. So throughout the next few weeks, we're going to be breaking these scriptures down. Um, we're going to have a staff pastor talking about the fivefold ministry gifts that were listed in the passage above. Uh, I want you guys to listen closely to these teachings. Uh, you might be watching today and you might say, you know what? I feel a call of God on my life to these fivefold ministry gifts. So let's first start. Where do these ministry gifts come from? It says that he gave some apostles. Who is he? We're talking about Jesus. Jesus gave these gifts for the building up of the saints. These gifts are an extension of Jesus. He embodies every one of these gifts. So let's start Jesus, the apostle. So in Hebrews 3 verse 1, it says, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the prophet, in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18, it says, I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth and he will tell the people everything I commanded him. Jesus also prophesied the destruction of the temple, which happened 40 years after his death, burial and resurrection. In Mark 13, verse 2, it says, and Jesus answering said, said unto him, seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus, the evangelist, Jesus said to him, it is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Mark 2 verse 17. Jesus, the pastor I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. That's John 10, verse 11. Jesus, the teacher. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. John 3, verse 2. He taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Matthew 8, 29. Jesus is the chief apostle. He was sent by God. Jesus is the chief prophet. He predicted many events that would happen, including the destruction of the temple. Jesus is the chief evangelist. He bore witness that he was the Messiah. Jesus is the chief pastor. He led and taught his disciples and taught them to continue the work even as he returned to heaven. These offices that were listed that we saw in the scriptures before is 
not of our choosing. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, we don't get to pick. Jesus picks. Jesus calls people to be in these positions. We are all called to share the gospel, but to make it your life's work, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, you must be called by Jesus. Oftentimes, some are called, some are sent, some just went. Sometimes people want these gifting so bad that they'll just go and try to start a ministry, but you have to be called and gifted to, to be uh, ones that start those types of ministries. You cannot choose the fivefold ministry. It chooses you. It chooses you. So why were these gifts given again? For the equipping of the saints so that the church can be equipped. The purpose of these offices are to get the people of God ready to minister the gospel in the highways and the byways and different places so that the saints can be mature, so that they can tell their friends about Jesus without, uh, with confidence and without fear. You know what? We shouldn't be jealous of others when we see these gifts in operation. We shouldn't go around saying, wait, I wish I had those gifts. The purpose of these gifts are not so that we can get prestige, so that people can honor us and give us a giant seat on the stage. But the purpose of these gifts are so that we could be servants. We were saved to serve. Like Pastor Earl said last week, we were saved to serve. The purpose of these gifts is so that we can serve the body of Christ. No one is greater than the other. It is all about serving Christ. So the goal, if you don't possess some of these gifts, the goal is how can you, the question you should ask yourself is how can I support the different gifts in the church? See, we are designed to celebrate each other's giftings. I personally don't have the gifting of administration. I've been working on it. And I've worked on it many years. Sometimes I'm not very organized, but what my job is to do is to uh, staff my weakness, is to find somebody who has that administration gift and partner with them and celebrate them and turn them loose onto the concepts and ideas that I may possess. And that's how we work together. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, it says, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, manifold means the various graces of God, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve one another. If anyone speaks, he should speak as one conveying the words of God. If anyone serves, he should serve with the strength of God, that the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The purpose of these giftings is that God gets the glory. It's not about man getting the glory. Well, I'm, I'm so great because I have a pastoral gift or I'm so great because I have a teaching gift. No, it's so that God is glorified and that people can hear about Jesus. I want to highlight someone who's been a blessing to us and to me personally and to family church. Uh, she recently went home to be with the Lord, but she had the gift of hospitality. It was a wonderful lady. We affectionately called her Grandma Charlotte. Uh, she had the ability to cook and bake things that would rival Julia Child. Uh, through her gifting, she would uh, make us breakfast every Sunday morning. And she would provide the breakfast for the pastors. And they would be refreshed and renewed so that they'd be able to continue the service and go back and preach the gospel. Oftentimes during those gospel preachings, people would give their lives to Jesus. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that when she entered into her reward, Jesus said, well done, good and faithful servant. She was able to partner with what God was doing here at Family Church with her gifting of baking and cooking and, and feeding and her gifting of hospitality. She was able to partner with the body of Christ. And I believe because of her faithfulness, it was given to her account, those souls that were won during that service and those people who gave their life to Jesus it was written on her account. Jesus said, here's your crown. Here's your reward because of her faithfulness to the body of Christ. The whole point of these giftings is not so that we're jealous of each other and that we don't complain. Well, I want to be a pastor and I'm not a pastor. How come I'm not this? How come I'm not that? That's not the purpose. The purpose is to take whatever gift you have received from God and use it for the glory of God. So we're going to continue to move on. So you may not have a gift, that specific gifting of being a, 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 a evangelist, a pastor, prophet, a teacher, but you can partner with the gifting. So what I want you to do is to think about how can I 
partner with the giftings that are in my church? How can I be a giver and, and bless the ministries, the various ministries that come out of the church? I just want to let you know that no gift is in, insignificant, that they all matter. They all work together to minister to the body of Christ. So let's read that scripture again one more time. Ephesians 4, 11, 13. And he gave, which is Jesus, some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. So tonight we're going to continue and we're going to talk about apostles. What is an apostle? And do po apostles still exist? And the two types of apostles. So let's define what that word means in the Greek, uh, what apostle means. The transliteration is apotalos, apotalos. That means a delicate messenger, one sent forth with orders, specifically applied to the 12 apostles of Christ, in a broader sense, applied to the eminent Christian teachers. All right. So that's what apostles mean. There were two primary usages of the word of apostle. The first is specifically referring to the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. The second is generically referring to other individuals who were sent out to be messengers and ambassadors of Christ. So the first apostle we're going to talk about, I'm going to say capital A, apostle. It represents those who saw Jesus with their own eyes and were faithful witnesses. They also had to be taught by Jesus himself. They had signs and wonders following them. Jesus selected the 12 apostles, and Paul is considered an apostle because he fulfilled those specific requirements. So you can see that Paul fulfilled those specific requirements in Galatians 1, verse 12. I received my message from no human source, and no one taught me. Instead, I received it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. So that is that one type of apostle. Some may say that there are no more apostles, but that's not entirely true. According to what we've just read in the Greek, an apostle is a sent one. And we know this because Paul points it out in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 23, when he is referring to Titus. If anyone inquires about Titus, he is my partner and a fellow worker concerning you. Or if our brethren are inquired about, they are messengers of the church, of the churches, the glory of Christ. The word messengers is the same word that means sent ones, which means apostles. Apostles do exist. These people go out and they dedicate their lives to establishing churches and ministerial works where there wasn't one before so that they may build up the saints for the work of the ministry. Apostle is a gift in the body of Christ. God places apostles first in the church. The Bible makes a clear dis a distinction that not all members of the church churches are apostles. So we look in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 29. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles or are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Apostles respond to the needs listed in Romans. People cannot be saved if they do not call on the name of the Lord. These individuals cannot call on someone if they have not believed in order to believe, they must first hear. Hearing comes from individual preaching to them. Apostles preach the gospel to those who have never heard it before. If you look in Romans 10, 13 through 14, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? I know I said a lot, 
but we have uh, modern day examples of this actually um our modern day example for us as an apostle would be our lead pastor's father pastor joe McKelvey. he packed up his family and moved to middletown from a, the distant land of New Jersey to establish a work to raise up pastors and people to continue the work of the ministry. He would be considered the apostle that started this work. Because of his sacrifice and the sacrifice of his family, I am sitting here in this seat teaching the word of God. He fulfilled the true role of an apostle. He was called to start a church in a distant land and raise up a church leaders for the work of the ministry. He was called by God to come to Middletown to establish a church. We also would consider uh, as apostles missionaries. They are responsible to establish the, a work and raise up saints for the work of the ministry. And I want to read something to you, which is uh, we're talking about partnering with these ministry gifts. In Matthew 10, 41, it says, whoever welcomes as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person as a, as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. See, you may not possess the gift of apostles. Sometimes we can't leave. We can't go overseas. We can't go to these different places, but we can partner by sending our support. Maybe it might be money. It might be a, a word of encouragement, but we can partner. And because we do that, we can receive the same reward as a, as a preacher, as a prophet, as an evangelist, because we partner with them. We call these guys missionaries. I've actually had the great and express privilege of being able to go on several mission trips. I went to a mission trip to a place called Gabon, Africa, and there was a work that was established there in the 1900s that was continuing. They not only grew it from just a small mission, but now they had churches planted all over that country. They had a hospital running to benefit the people that were there. It wasn't just a work that was just one person that came and, well, we still have the same old place for the rest of our lives. No, but they expanded the work of the ministry. That's how you know the gift is in operations when you see the expansion from just one little place to many different places. Also, something you may not know about me is that my family, my grandfather, came to America as a missionary to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up people. And he raised up several ministries in the city that, that are now still continuing and that, that benefit people who are coming out of prison and coming off of drugs. He established a work there. And because of those types of works, I'm sitting here, that people's lives were transformed because of that. In closing, I want you guys to really understand that these giftings are not something that we need to be jealous of, but these are things that we need to support and promote. We have all been saved to serve. We all possess giftings that God wants to use every single day in our everyday lives. Our job as believers is to support the gifts that God has placed in the body of Christ. So next week, we'll be, we'll be off uh, so that the staff can enjoy a week off. But it gives you time to catch up on the Bible study. So I want you guys to go look back, read through some of the notes, uh, get a deeper understanding of these different scriptures. All right, let's pray. God, we're so grateful that you've placed over your church apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists, God. We thank you, Lord, for using them in a mighty way. Lord, teach us how to support those different five-fold ministry gifts. Show us what we need to do to, to ignite the fire that's in us to use our gifts for the glory of God. And we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching today.